Hi, my name is Travis Granoto. I'm in Dr. Shu's Plant Pathology 315 class, and I did my project on black shank and tobacco. I've had some firsthand experience with this at my work in a tobacco genetics lab here at the university. One of my the grad students I was working for, it was breeding for black shank resistance in tobacco, and one of her experiments in Kinston was completely wiped out by black shank. This disease is very important because it affects all counties in North Carolina that grow flu cured tobacco and can cause up to 2 to 3 percent total tobacco yield loss in North Carolina. This results in thousands of dollars lost to the tobacco industry here in our state. Tobacco or the black shank in tobacco was originally discovered by Heinrich Anton de Berry in the early 1900s and it is classified as a fungus but is a technically an oomycete which is a water mold that is found in poorly drained soil and nutrient deficient soil. So here I have painted a tobacco plant that has recently been infected with black shank. As you can see, it has the three cl clear symptoms that all plants exhibit when they have this Phytophthora. You have the initial root rot, which causes the plant to fail to gain water up through its roots into its shoot. You have the blackening of the stem, which is characteristic of its name. And then you have yellowing and wilting of the leaves all throughout the plant. I have also drawn a disease cycle for black shank. So we begin with the chlamydia spore surviving in the soil. And then it either takes two routes, direct germination, where it begins growing a small hyphae like this out of its spore, or and then, and then goes on to infect the root tip and buries itself inside the plant cells, or it can indirectly germinate and form zoospores, which will then land on leaves and can cause vascular problems such as, and it'll cause necrosis and chlorosis of the leaf. Here, when the root tip is infected, the plant at a, at a young age can constantly wilts and experiences stunted growth which continues throughout its lifetime. This plant will eventually die and then release secondary inoculum, such as other spores or zoospores, which will then reissue the cycle with new chlamydia spores. Thank you.